Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 246, I think. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. I had fun reading your comments during the countdown timer. Thanks for joining me live. Hello to those of you watching on replay. If you are catching the replay, drop hashtag replay in the comments so we can say hi to you. And if you're new here, let us know. We'd love to say hello. I try to catch you. If not, I will say hi to you after the live stream. I'm excited about tonight's projects because we are two days ahead of the of celebration starting as well as the July to December mini catalog. So tonight's going to be a sneak peek. I'm going to take a quick moment and say hello to some of you in the chat. Hi, Catherine, Melanie, Leticia, Cindy, Joan, Laura, Melissa, welcome. I had a comment last week, it feels like romper room. I totally agree with that. <laughs> Hi, Geneva and Kimberly, Janet, Linda, Paper Pixie Time. Aw, oh, thank you, Mickey. The Orange Dragonfly is here. Hi, Jackie. Awesome. Yes, um, Michelle, you are watching live. You're catching it live. Um, Thank you. Hi, Tammy. Thank you. I'm excited about tonight's projects. New products are always super fun, and I get really excited as we gear up for the launch of the new mini catalog. Again, that will launch Friday. Online ordering should be available as soon as 3 a.m. Mountain Time. That's 2 a.m. Pacific, 3 Mountain, 4 Central, 5 Eastern for those of us in the United States. I don't know the time in Hawaii though, <laughs> and Alaska's probably a different time zone too, but Rosina, create with love, welcome, welcome. Awesome, all right, so let's go through a couple of things. Brian, it's your cameo. <laughs> My husband Brian is watching for your comments. Um, if you have a question during tonight's live stream, please put a Q colon in front of it. That will help us cue your questions at the end. I'm gonna try to remember to remind you of that throughout tonight's live stream, especially for those of you that are new or have joined us late. But Brian is trying to catch questions where you may not have put the Q colon in front of it and pop those into my queue for me. We will save questions for the end of the live stream so that way I can focus on tonight's projects. And a couple of housekeeping items. First, when you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks. Orders of $25 or more earn Pixie Perks stars on my digital loyalty card. You do need to use the host code if your order is under $150. And the easiest way to make sure the host code is attached is to use my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop, and the host code will automatically apply to your order. If your order is 150 or more, you wanna make sure to remove that host code or don't add the host code because you will earn stamping rewards. You will also earn Pixie Perks on orders of 150 or more as well. So that's the scoop there. Product shares, today is the last day to sign up for my product shares for the July to December 2022 mini catalog. I'm also including the celebration papers there in well, as well as the host paper that's in the mini catalog, but I'm cutting off signups. By the time I wake up tomorrow morning, signups will be cut off. Tomorrow is the payment deadline. I'd only offer shares one time per catalog. So now's your chance. You can visit thepaperpixie.com slash shares to see all the details. I have a paper only share, a ribbon only share, or a paper and ribbon share if you want it all. And that comes with a free gift of the festive pearls. So we will order those first thing Friday morning. Brian and I will get to work busy working on it next week as soon as those products arrive. And we plan to turn those around the week of July 11th, right? That's a Monday. Yeah, because the 4th of July, yes the week of July 11th. So don't forget, don't miss out. I don't want anybody to miss out. Also, the last chance products that ends tomorrow. Uh, these are items from the January to June 2022 mini catalog that are retiring, sad. Some of them or many of them are discounted up to 50% off. Still some great deals to be had as I designed tonight's project. Um, I was using that awesome denim ribbon and it is, I think, 30 or 40% off. I couldn't resist using it, but it'll be gone as of tomorrow or after tomorrow. So um, I'm, I'll show you an alternative as well, but make sure you don't miss out on the last chance products. 
Then the other thing that ends tomorrow is the kits collection is buy one, get one 50% off. And the 50% off kit is the more expensive one, which I love that's how Stampin' Up! is doing it. So visit thepaperpixie.com slash kits. You can check out the kits we have available. These are great for brand new crafters, great for a little impromptu get together with friends. Everything you need comes in the kit. So, all right, ready? Okay, show and tell. Let me do you a quick sneak peek of what we're making tonight. I couldn't resist. I had a um, fan follower ask me if I've got a pouch for the A2 sized cards and I just couldn't get it out of my head. So I did make one for that. We're gonna make a set of cards tonight, set of six cards and this really cool um, A2 card set pouch. <laughs> <laughs> it looks more like a clutch, but it's a cute little folder looking thing using a full sheet of designer series paper. This is going to be using designer series paper from Celebration, but I'm going to show you, tell you all about that. Let's do the kids show and tell really quickly. This is our son Nolan is Lego obsessed. Oh, it, look, it fits. I'm just going to put it here for a little bit so you can kind of look at some of the details he puts on here. He is my, our, our rising, I always keep saying my, I'm so used to being up here by myself. Um, our rising first grader loves Legos and he's super imaginative. He's got a little treasure chest here. I think that's a dog. There is, um, treasure here. I love these little things. It's like a little $5 coin. Um, so this is a ship. I don't think it's a battleship, but um, he just had a lot of fun putting all kinds of pieces and parts together. So that's from Nolan. Is there room for me? You want me to put mm -hmm. it back? Okay. Yes. And then Lily loves doing these Tokidoki. This is the Mufia, um, but super cute. I love Tokidoki. I used to have diaper bags for the kids that had the Tokidoki characters and always had fun with Donatella and all the different fun characters in the Tokidoki series. And then she did this cute cow pattern on the back and we were chuckling before this. It says, to Lily from me. So I believe it was to herself from herself. But lots of fun. She had fun coloring that. That's what she wanted to share with you tonight. If you're new, the kids love to pick their um, show and tell to show you. And it's usually creative projects that they've done um, during the week. So that's the scoop there. All right. Let's come back to this. And ooh, Mary, I just saw your comment. A new Lego warehouse is coming to Chesterfield, Virginia. How cool is that? Love it. All right. So here is our little gift um, card set gift pouch. I never know what to call these, but let me slide off. This is the denim ribbon, but am I right? The denim looks so cute with this paper. This is the Rings of Love designer series paper that is a free item with a $50 purchase starting Friday. And it's one of those um, pouches similar to what I did two or three weeks ago. And in it, I've got a set of six cards. Now these are really quick and easy cards. I've got to give a shout out to fellow demonstrator, Jessica Taylor for the idea. She came up with this idea to showcase both sides of the designer series paper. And I fell in love with the simplicity of it especially for making multiples of cards. So if you shopped with me in the month of May, I'm so behind, but I made a whole bunch of these for thank you notes for my May customers. They're in the mail on the way to you. So you will get your own version of this if you shopped with me in May. I love to do a hand stamped card if I'm able to pull it off. So this is showcasing, let me pull in, I can't show you the pages of the catalog today. I can starting Friday, but not today because it's against policy, but this is the Ringed with Nature bundle. I love this stamp set. It's a photopolymer set, but such a great multi-occasion stamp set. We've got Christmas, love and warmth, get well soon, thinking of you, just for you, and happy anniversary. Love the way this is. So these are intended to be mushrooms, but I've also seen Sarah Douglas, our CEO, create little gumdrops with those. How cute is that? They totally look like gumdrops too. You can make... Um, acorns as well and I believe the acorn top here pairs really well with these as well um, but there's also let me show you these are the tree rings um, hybrid whether well, it's the tree ring I just can't think of the actual name of it. it's a hybrid bundle or a hybrid set of dies and an embossing folder but I wanted to show you in here so we've got this 
for a mushroom top or also the base of an acorn as well. I think I'm getting that right, but that's a multiversal, versatile die there. And this is what's so cool. I'm gonna show you how to use this tonight. This is the, the die that works with the Tree Rings 3D embossing folder. Again, this comes with the dies. So it's a hybrid that comes together and then you can get all of this bundled together. I believe the price is, I'm gonna have you double check. I think it's $53, but it will earn you a pack of the Rings of Love designer series paper, which is just the cutest paper. You're not gonna be able to look it up. You're gonna have to look at it in here because it hasn't launched yet. So I will show you how to use this, but we're gonna do, believe it or not, you can cut and emboss at the same time. You're not gonna hurt the embossing folder and you're not gonna hurt your machine. So we're gonna do that tonight. We're gonna make the whole set of cards. I'm gonna show you how I go through that really quick and easy to make. And then this uses a full sheet of 12 by 12. And I just love the way that little pocket looks. You can fold it flat if you wanna make a few of these ahead of time. I know you all have 12 by 12 pieces of pattern paper that you're hoarding for some reason and not using. This is another great project with the cards and the pouch to use up that beautiful paper and bless the world with it. So let's not hide it in our, in our cabinets and our drawers, people. Let's use it, okay? All right, so. Let me go ahead and get this out of the way. We're gonna start with putting together the cards and then we'll jump into creating the pouch itself. Um, let me tell you what page it's on. I'm helping Brian find the price here. Hold on one second. Page uh, 62, okay? All right, let me show you, these are all I think these are all, oh, there's a few different patterns here. We're gonna make all six of our cards with the same pattern, because I'm gonna show you you can get six out of a sheet of 12 by 12. Bundle? The whole bundle, yes, it was $53. It's $53 for the bundle, which means you can pick the Rings, the Rings of Love designer series paper, and this is just another pattern that's in it. It's so cute with the mushrooms. Let me show you a couple of other alternatives with <clears throat> papers in the set. How cute are these little houses? the birdies which I love and then there's the mushrooms again so fun 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 all right oh you guys are so sweet okay and I've got six envelopes in here as well I did not stamp the envelopes we're gonna have naked envelopes for this project but you could also add a little heart to the envelopes that would be cute maybe we'll do that tonight all right let's start with I'm gonna start with the cardstock I need three sheets of that. Hold on, I only pulled two. <laughs> All right, now this is how I did this with the card um, to create the cards and do multiples. I kind of start by doing um, full card fronts first and then I'm gonna cut away. So to, essentially to show you what we're doing here is we're gonna create a card base, but the front panel of the card is just gonna be this little one inch section. I know it's gonna be hard for you to, to cut that away, but you can add it to your um, scrap stash and use it for so many other projects. So we're gonna take three sheets of Poppy Parade, sorry. <laughs> avalanche of cards over here. Three sheets of Poppy Parade, these are eight and a half by 11. The first thing... <clears throat> Yes, Poppy Parade. All right, so I'm gonna, on the short side, so the eight and a half inch side, I'm gonna put this to four and a quarter, and I'm gonna go ahead and score right down the center, okay? Scoring first, this is my best tip for creating multiples. Try to score the least amount of times you need to and then cut, and you'll have multiples faster than you know it. Then I'm gonna slide this to the three and a quarter mark and gasp, we're gonna cut, okay? So this is a three and a quarter by 11 inch piece of scrap paper that we can add to our scrap stash. Coming back here, I'm gonna turn this to the long side and we're gonna go ahead and cut this at five and a half. Okay, I'm gonna do all three of them for you so you get the hang of it. So again, starting with eight and a half by 11 in portrait, lining it up to four and a quarter 
Always double check that you've got your cutting blade out of the way first so you don't cut when you don't want to. We're gonna score at four and a quarter, sliding it to the right to three and a quarter. I'm gonna cut. Save this piece for my crafty stash. Then I'm gonna turn it to the five and a half inch side and cut. So basically what we're doing is we're getting two card bases out of one sheet of 12 by 12. And one more time, four and a quarter. Again, we've got this in portrait. Score at four and a quarter. Cut at three and a quarter. Can you tell I've made a few of these? One more, thank you. Turn it to the long side and cut at five and a half. Okay. Great questions, you guys. Just a reminder, we're gonna do Q&A at the end. So to get your questions in the queue, put a Q colon in front of your question and those will get added to the queue. I love seeing your questions. I've got two sheets of the Rings of Love Designer Series paper. This is my favorite pattern in the whole pack, but all the patterns are fantastic. I'm gonna put one aside. And because this is directional, I want my pieces to be in portrait. So I'm gonna cut this with the direction going top to bottom, not side to side, but top to bottom. And I'm gonna cut three strips at four inches, okay? So four, and you're gonna have three equal strips because you can get three four inch strips out of 12 by 12. Then I'm gonna turn these and cut them to five and a half. So what you're gonna end up with is pieces in portrait that are four by five and a half. Now it's a little smaller than a card front. And I'm gonna show you the trick to that. We're trying to maximize our paper here so we can get six full pieces out of it. Again, I'm cutting these all to five and a half. And you're gonna end up with a little one inch by four inch strip that you can absolutely use on another card design, okay? I do like kind of doing this from start to finish for you so you can see the process. Um, so it's a little bit of a custom card class tonight. How's that sound? All right, so I've got my three strips, great pieces to use on a future project. You can use either side. So save those because they're great for a card front. And now what we've got is six pieces that measure four inches by five and a half. And then we also have six inches of the Poppy Parade that technically measure five and a quarter by five and a half. They're scored here at four and a quarter. I know that looks really weird. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on these score lines. All right, so we've got those folded. I'm gonna grab some card inserts as well. Always keep a stash of these in my drawer already cut and ready to go. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I actually take a whole pack of basic white cardstock and cut it down to sort of my most popular sizes. The one that's most popular for card inserts and these are four inches by five and a quarter. So we're gonna ultimately add those to the inside, but we're gonna do the designer series paper first. So I love the way this works. Choose your adhesive of choice, but essentially what I'm gonna do here is I am lining up, just so I'm tapping that on my surface. I wanna make sure that this edge of the designer series paper lines up with this edge of the cardstock, because I think as you'll notice, that's not gonna go all the way to the score line there, and that was so that we could get six of these out of a sheet of 12 by 12. So the best way to add adhesive, make sure you kind of line that up on the edge. I'm hoping I've got enough glue because we're at the bottom of the bottle again. I'm gonna add a strip of liquid adhesive because it's my adhesive of choice right here along 
the back side of this one inch flap and then right here along the top edge with the way I've got it positioned of my designer series paper. Let me pull this up without moving it. So you can see glue here and glue there. So when I fold these down, that glue is gonna go right where we want it to without oozing out. Cause you just don't wanna get glue where you don't want it to go. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my bone folder and I'm just gently burnishing just to kind of spread that glue out. And how cute is that card front? It's like one of those book fold cards cause you got the one inch strip of the cardstock here, but then our card front is this beautiful double-sided patterned paper. So let me go ahead and quickly do the remaining five in the same way. Again, tapping it there so that edge is here. Again, shout big shout out to Jessica Taylor for this great idea to showcase both sides of our patterned paper. Liquid glue, um, tape runner adhesive works great for this as well. You know me, I'm a sucker for liquid glue. It's my favorite. Also a great way to give that pop of color here, especially with the Poppy Parade, but the card does look great with Knight of Navy as well. Evening Evergreen would be pretty too, okay? So again, just kind of tapping and lining up that edge. Doing those two beads of glue there or strips of adhesive. You can use tear and tape, you can use your tape runner. Let's see, get that lined up. Sometimes it's a little bit off. <laughs> there we go. I can't wait to show you how the hybrid embossing folder works in case you've never seen it before. I, I was nervous to try it for the first time, but it works like a dream. I'm forgetting to burnish here. You don't need to burnish, but I feel like that spreads the glue out a little bit better. We got two more to do. But this is a great project to have all the pieces and parts kind of cut ahead of time and I'm a big fan of grabbing a lap board and sitting in front of my favorite TV show and binge watching a show and making a whole bunch of cards. There we go. Ooh, that's a good question. I can't wait to get to that one. <laughs> Did you see the last one that came through? Yeah. So if you've just popped on, we're going to do Q&A at the end. So put a Q colon in front of your question and that will put it in our queue for the end of the live stream so I can focus on tonight's projects. All right, we're going to our six card fronts now. I'm going to quick put the um, insert in. And again, this is basic white that measures four inches by five and a quarter inches. I was thinking about tonight's project and I had been working on this all week for my customers and I'm like, you know what? I love this project too much. It's going in the live stream because <laughs> I just wanted to share it with you guys so badly. It's such a great project. I love finding ways to show, not only showcase our pattern paper, but also show you ways as one of my other fans commented to be paper responsible, right? <laughs> paper responsible, but to maximize in other words, maximize the use of your paper so you can get as much out of it as you can. And I mean, if you're like me during celebration, you end up earning quite a few freebies during the celebration period. And one of the things that I will always get multiples of are the papers with celebration. I only need one of each stamp set, but the papers send me, send me all the papers. Um, so I love that this paper in celebration is free with a $50 purchase and it goes with the ringed with nature bundle, which will get you to that $50 purchase price. So that paper is free. Such a great thing. And the paper's great. It covers so many different occasions. There's a fall pattern in there. There's a holiday pattern that looks like poinsettias or poinsettias. Um, so great, great paper.
Everybody has their favorite adhesive, don't they? And yes, I agree, liquid glue definitely takes some practice, that's for sure. What are we watching now? We're watching Peaky Blinders. What did we just finish? I don't even remember. Uh, Sarah. Oh, Who Killed Sarah? That's a show, people. <laughs> um, the one that's in Spanish. It's always funny for the, um, I don't know if you guys do this, but I, I, Brian doesn't need the subtitles, but I always put the subtitles on just so I'm not saying to him, wait, what did they just say? <laughs> so on the Spanish where um, it's English dubbed and then you turn the subtitles on and you get a whole different, <laughs> you get whole different lines that way. It's funny. And then I am watching, because Brian's not a fan, um, season four of Stranger Things. So good. I'm not giving anything away. <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. And I do enjoy the 80s song. What was the name of it? That just hit the charts again. Running on up something along those lines. I remember hearing it on the radio and thinking, gosh, this sounds like it's from the 80s. And sure enough, how cool that a, a show is bringing an 80s song to the top charts. All right, so we've got our card bases are finished. Just to show you really quickly, I love that you get that peek of the inside um, or the backside of the de designer series paper. So now let's go ahead and have some fun with the Ringed with Nature bundle, okay? And I've done a couple of things ahead of time to share with you sort of what I do when I'm doing multiples. I've got some templates on the Stamparatus and um, I also did, I'll show you, I am not a fussy cutter, so I actually used my scan and cut, which I'm not gonna give a scan and cut tutorial tonight. I highly recommend checking out the Papered Chef. She's got lots of scan and cut tutorials, but the heart itself I stamped and had the scan and cut cut it out for me okay so i did a hundred of them and i'll show you the negative of what was left behind but let's jump in and use the tree rings hybrid embossing folder again that the embossing folder comes with the set of dies this is one of them it is 19 or sorry 16 dies in the set but you might as well get the bundle because it's $53. Again, this will be available starting on Friday, June 1st. And um, you can also earn the Rings of Love designer series paper. Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna grab Soft Suede because I think that, that is one of the colors in the designer series paper. And I'm actually gonna just cut this into quarters. You could be a little bit more paper responsible, but for me, for doing things really quickly, I'm just gonna cut this into four quarters. So at four and a quarter and five and a half. You don't need to be exact, but we're gonna use these to put into the hybrid embossing folder. Oh, did I not say July 1st? Did I say June 1st? July 1st. In case I misspoke, sometimes my brain thinks one thing and my mouth says another. All right, so I think you're gonna notice there are some paper fuzzies kind of left behind, that's normal. That is from the die cutting into the cardstock, and it just kind of gets left behind on the embossing folder, it doesn't hurt it. Um, but I'm gonna show you how we're gonna line this up. So, on the side that says Stampin' Up, you're gonna put your dies face up, so cutting, or I should say, cutting side up. And you want to just sort of adjust it here. You're gonna kind of feel it catch once you have it lined up. And then I want you to see, I'm trying to wiggle that, but it's staying put. That means it's in the right spot, okay? So it literally fits. There's a little bit of raised edges here on the 3D embossing folder. I'm lining that up, and then once, you, once it sticks, you can see it's not moving. Okay, so I'm gonna take a piece of my soft suede. This is a quarter sheet. Now you'll see these two tree rings are only gonna get, they're gonna get a partially cut off thing, which is okay. I'm just using the three in the middle. Then I'm gonna close my sandwich. Okay, let me bring in the stamp and cut and emboss machine. So 
So we've got a, this is a 3D embossing folder, which means all we need is plate one. And then I'm gonna feed my die, or I'm sorry, feeding the embossing folder in with the spine going in the machine first, and then plate number four, okay? That goes right over the top. Because this is fairly detailed, I'm just gonna go back and forth. That's one way. And we're gonna do this a few times here, okay? But I wanna show you how cool this is. So let's go ahead and open this up. Look at that, it not only cut, but it also embossed such a cool tree ring right there. So we got these three larger ones that we're gonna hang on to. We're gonna run this through three times because I do need one extra. Now you've got that we can throw away and you could use these on a project, maybe putting them on the edge of a project or hidden behind something so you hide that cut edge. Otherwise, you just need to cut your piece a little bit longer than five and a half, probably to six would get it for you, okay? So same thing, I'm gonna line that up in the die. There we go. Grabbing my soft suede cardstock here. Again, closing that down, putting the folded edge in the machine first. We're gonna do this three times. Love these hybrid folders. Forward and backwards just to make sure we get a good cut through. And again, we got these cool tree rings. All right, and one more for good measure. Thank you. You should be in my craft room all the time, Brian. Pick up my paper mess that I make. He's just picking up pieces as I <laughs> toss them to the side. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> all right, there we go. I can feel the static one more time. Yeah, so with the hybrid embossing folders, it does take a little bit to figure out which side of the folder to line up your dies. Hopefully that's a good trick for you. The Stampin' Up side is the side that you want to line up your dies on, specifically for this one. I'm not sure that that's always the case for all of them, but. All right, let's clean up my mess here. Um, I am, I don't think that I need to cut these dies ahead of time because I do have extras, but I wanted to show you in the set of dies, we're going to use these three larger circles and let me show you to try to save some time. I have these blank, well, Brian cut these blanks for me, but these are just cut from those three different sized, um, pieces. They're actually tree rings or they're to fit inside the tree rings. Wait, wait to see how they line up. But these are just a bunch of blanks that I cut ahead of time, that Brian cut ahead of time. I'm going to use to use, I'm going to use in the stamp apparatus to cut or to stamp our sentiments. Okay. So let me get this mess out of the way. I got an extra piece of soft suede there. But yeah, to save time, I'm not going to cut those out since I've already got those blanks ready to go. All right, so Stamparatus wise, I think many of you already know this trick. I'm gonna try to explain it without demonstrating it to save time here. I added first just a piece of, I'll partially show it to you, okay? The inks we're using tonight are Poppy Parade and Knight of Navy. So I would take a scrap piece of basic white and then ink up the stamp. Now I do want to show you, my stamp has a little bit of extra photopolymer on it. So see how it gets real messy real easily? Um, that actually isn't a problem I thought it was going to be, but when I stamp it down, there's just enough photopolymer that I don't get that extra halo. You just don't want to push down too hard. So you would have put your stamp on the Stamparatus plate. 
stamp it down on your scrap piece of, well, I, a, I say a scrap piece, but it's not actually a scrap. And then once it's stamped and we know exactly where it's gonna stamp, you can come in and die cut, okay? So just pretend we've done that. I believe that is this one, okay? So just pretend it's already been die cut. And there is my template here. I made sure to make a note of where the top of my template was, okay? So through the magic of television, I already die cut that. And that is to tell me where to line up the sentiment in the series of blanks that we've made. So, got some blanks. I'm gonna go ahead and line that up in the cutout. We're gonna stamp three of this one because we're gonna use one on the outside of our pouch. Then I can just go ahead and stamp and that's gonna go right where we want it on this tree ring piece. Okay, so we're gonna do three of those. Again, so awesome for creating multiples, especially for card sets like this. And one more. Oh, so good to hear, Em, that you use this technique to make wedding favors, 50 to 100, that's so cool. Yeah, this is one of my favorite Stamparatus tricks for sure. Any stamp positioning tool you have, you can do the same thing. Okay, so I got those three. Then I'm just gonna change out my template, right? We would have created these ahead of time. We're gonna do two of this size. Doo -doo -doo. I think that's this one. And it just nestles right in that cut out already. It takes a little bit to figure out which direction to put that tree ring. But you could also use Evening Evergreen ink here, Poppy Parade, some beautiful colors that coordinate. And the pouch is so easy to do, so hang tight for that. And with the photopolymer, usually these stick to the stamp which actually makes it easier. It does the work for me to pull the stamped image off. And then we've got our third one, which is the smallest. I do like to use the magnet for this, just to keep it in place, just in case I need to re-stamp an image. But I've got my Knight of Navies extra juicy tonight. There we go. And way one more there we go get my ink put away before I make a mess there we go love that bold sentiment there now we can put this away All right, so let me show you how cool these nest into our tree rings, okay? So we've got our three large ones. These are kind of both medium size. So sometimes it's gonna take a little bit to figure out which goes with which. Obviously the larger tree rings are gonna be the easiest to line up. And then you can sort of see this tree ring has that little interesting flat edge there. That one's gonna line up with this one, okay? So I know that these go together. So those two, I'm gonna have some extras here. And then, I feel like I cut more. Oh, I did three and three, okay, that's why. <laughs> and that's gonna go with these, okay? So, liquid glue here. Oops, there we go. See if I'm lying, there we go, that's lined up right. Okay, I just wanna show you, before I press it down, see how you got that little bit of like a 16th of an inch edge? I love how those nestle together. Now I know you're covering up the tree, the tree rings here on this die cut, 
You can check them out on the back. Obviously the recipient's not gonna see them, but I just love how that pairs together. So let's do the rest of these. Again, liquid glue I love for this. Oh, come on glue, centrifugal force. <laughs> there we go. Whoops, that goes this way. There's that. That goes that way. <laughs> A little bit like puzzle pieces. All right, there's those three. And these, again, look for that little interesting flat edge that'll help you line it up on the tree ring. And liquid glue here gives you a chance to slide that right into place. You've got that good sixteenth of an inch border on the tree rings. This one, let's get that lined up before, there we go. All right, last one. There we go. All right, there we go, we've got those. Now, this is what I was talking about ahead of time. I created, I stamped all of the hearts. Now there is not a heart die in the bundle. So I don't love fussy cutting, although these would be fairly easy to fussy cut if you enjoy it. So I stamped an entire sheet of them in Poppy Parade. And you'll just have to search on YouTube. I use my brother, Scan and Cut, and I know you're gonna ask, I have the SDX 125e but how cool is that i stamped a hundred of them and the scan and cut cut a hundred of them out in seven minutes how cool is that i love it so that was how i created so many cards and i had to add that little heart because i just think it's so cute so we're just going to use liquid glue on these and just kind of embellish the tree rings here in a cute way they're going to be kind of all in different spots based on how they fit but I'll just grab liquid glue. You could pop them up on dimensionals as well. But I thought on the big one, I kind of love the heart. Kind of up to the right there. I'll do one like that. Also cute on the bottom. Yeah, I told my husband, I told Brian that um, I ran upstairs and showed him the, the negative. I was like, I just stamped a hundred of these and cut them out in 15 minutes or less from stamping to cutting, to getting ready to put on my project. So cool. I actually think I like the heart better on the bottom for these big ones. We'll do that. But this is the fun part, just embellishing. A little pop of that red makes these cards look super cute. Something a little extra. That's right, Deborah. I could probably do with the blending brushes would be really cute for a background. One more heart here. So yeah, just have fun. Fun with your heart placements. You can pop that one up here. There we go, something different, okay? Now, I'm gonna save one of these, that one. I'm gonna flip these all over and I'm gonna grab dimensionals and we're just gonna do a trio on each of them, just kind of an even spacing. We'll make a big mess with our dimensional backings. But that's the fun part, right? Just to give them a little bit of pop. And then we'll jump into the card pouch. Now I'm just pulling the backings off. All right, 
right, now I'll kind of push these off to the side and show you. I like to just stick my finger right in the dimensionals, pick up that sentiment, and I'm focused on the sentiment. I'm not looking at the tree ring. Tree ring's gonna look cattywampus, but I want my sentiment to be level with the bottom edge of that card. So we'll just pop that on the front. And these will all look just slightly different because the tree rings are different. Do you still have that Poppy Parade um, ink pad? I'm gonna stamp the hearts on the envelopes, I think. Thank you. All right, so we got our six card fronts. Now I do like to sort of stagger them when I stack this in the pouch, just because we've got our sentiment down here to the bottom. So those will, it'll give that a little bit less thickness that way. And then why don't we do just a little bit of stamping on our six envelopes, just to be cute. I'm gonna run out of space here, let's see. So Poppy Parade, I've got this cute little heart stamp. That's the one that I stamped and used my scan and cut. And then we can either put the heart, I'm gonna put it on the back envelope flap, but you could also put it in like the lower corner. But I thought that would be really cute. Some of these are a little bit out of view, but I think you'll get the idea. Poppy Parade ink, love the photopolymer sets. I can see exactly where I'm stamping. Just a cute little extra something on the envelopes. So there we go. You may have that back. <laughs> All right, so we've got our envelopes. I'm gonna set this off to the side. Let's jump into the pouch here. So we're gonna grab another coordinating piece of paper that is 12 by 12. This is a full sheet. And with a directional pattern, you want to start with it with the pattern going top to bottom. I'm going to bring in my Simply Scored here. No naked envelopes, that's right. No naked envelopes, right? <laughs> All right, so again, pattern, directional pattern top to bottom. We're going to score this at three inches and nine inches or three inches from each side. I'm gonna then turn it counterclockwise. You don't even have to remember that. You just wanna make sure that the top of your pattern, when you rotate it, is on the left, okay? So that when we fold this pouch, our pattern is gonna go in the right direction on the front of the pouch. So we're gonna do our first score line at four and a half, five and a half, and 10. Now I'm gonna come back in a second and do another score line, but I want you to maximize your scraps and not have a score line where you don't need it. So let me repeat that one more time. We've got on where we've got the pattern at the top, three inches and nine inches. I'm rotating it counterclockwise, but making sure the top of my pattern is on the left. Four and a half, five and a half, 10. Okay, we're gonna bring this back in a second. First, I'm gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines as I'm looking for my bone folder. It's a pretty busy pattern, so just feel for the score lines. Let me bring it in a template really quick. So template wise, obviously this is not to scale, but this is a square template. And you'll notice that score line does not go all the way across. We're gonna do that score line after we've removed these top two corners. But I do want you to pay attention 
there is a shorter section at the top versus the one that's at the bottom. Okay, so big difference between those two. You wanna focus on the one that's the shorter section at the top. Again, we're not doing anything to the sides that are the three inch side. It's just this top corner here. And we're gonna remove these two rectangles in the corner. So it's probably gonna be a little difficult to see the score lines here, but I'm gonna remove those corners, just following along the score lines. Then you've got this piece that's great for another project. Does not have an extra score line in it that you don't need. Not a big deal. If this, if you don't save scraps this big, you could do the, there's going to be a 10 and a half inch score line. But I figured it's better to remove this first so we can save those pieces or maximize those pieces. I'll bring this back in a second. Bring in this back one more time. Again, we've got the top of our pattern here on the left, and then I'm just gonna make a score line at 10 and a half. Okay. So 10 and a half, there's an extra score line there. All right, let's fold and burnish on that one. Now, bringing in the template again, we're gonna do these diagonal score lines but I don't need you to measure or use a ruler or anything like that. We're gonna use our paper and our hands to do our hands in our bone folder to do those diagonal score lines. Very similar to a few weeks ago. We've got this score line here that I'm gonna line up with this folded edge. I do like to put my bone folder in there right where the score line meets the edge. And then I can fold. I'm gonna basically fold like this lining up that score line with the edge. Let me do that really quick. And then you're gonna press from the inside and that's gonna give us the diagonal score line exactly where we need it. It's gonna go like that, okay? We're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, I kinda use my fingernail here because I'm right-handed. Doing the same thing, lining up that score line with the folded edge, come in and burnish that diagonal score line that okay turn it around and repeat this time we're going to this score line so we've got this one inch section here we're going to use this score line to line up to the folded edge no worries Lonnie that's what replays are for and then again lining that up to the edge and we're essentially just creating these diagonal score lines. They're a total 45 degree angle to the project. A little hard to see on the pattern paper. Now, I'm gonna make a mess on this template because I wanna show you what we're gonna do next. We're gonna add a little bit of adhesive, but we only wanna do it up to that diagonal score line, okay? Just making a mess here with Sharpie, which is fun. All right, so basically you wanna leave these triangles and this middle rectangle alone, no adhesive on those, just these diagonal pieces out to the edge, okay? Liquid glue is good for this. Now this is a pretty big project, so I'm just gonna do one side at a time. Normally I would do both sides, more centrifugal force here. Again, I'm just sticking inside that diagonal to the edge, I'm gonna focus on the two sections on the same side. Hopefully you can see. Then I'm just gonna fold this flat. I'm just using my bone folder to kind of smooth that out. We're gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side. Uh-oh, more centrifugal force needed. And you can be messy with your glue because nobody's gonna see it. Again, fold it flat. Again, we're strategic about where we're putting the glue so that when we pop this baby open, look at the pouch that's created. I love that. All right, so let's grab our set of cards. 
Thank you. These are gonna fit right into this pocket. Look at that. Perfect fit, you got a little bit of wiggle room. Now, you do have some room to put more cards in. I was strategic about how I sort of tapered the top here because different than last week's project or a couple weeks ago with the mini cards, I had a little bit more headspace for the envelopes and cards. Here we don't because these are pretty big for um, trying to fit into a 12 by 12. So I added that little half inch um, edge there on the top, but then they still fit really nicely in there. Okay, so you could close this with um, a magnet, uh, Velcro dots, anything that you want. I'm actually gonna opt to not close it other than with a ribbon. So I'm gonna bring in the seventh um, tree ring that we have, and I'm gonna come in and punch a hole here. I've just got an eighth of an inch circle punch, and I'm just gonna turn this into a cute little tag, okay? Couple of ribbons, if you gotta have the denim ribbon, it's only available until tomorrow, and I think it's $4.90 US. Denim ribbon would be beautiful for this. If, you wanna, if you're already placing an order tomorrow before the last chance sale is up, grab some denim ribbon if you don't already have it. Or this, will, this is in the annual catalog, this is the Evening Evergreen mm, Window Pane Check Ribbon. We're gonna use this one tonight. And I gotta remember, Let's see, because I want to make sure I'm tying the tag onto this at the same time. I want this to be there. Okay, I'm going to feed this through the back of my tag. And then once we're done with this, we will jump into Q&A. Okay, I'm feeding the ribbon through the back. I'm just going to pull that down. So we've got it there, ready to slide it back up when we're done with our bow. Again, grab your reverse tweezers. In the new mini catalog, there's also an embossing toolkit that comes with reverse tweezers as well. These are on my favorites page. These come in the embossing toolkit. You could use either. These are a little bit heavier. And then I'm just gonna tie this right off the spool. Again, just trying to get my flap where I want it. And we are kind of doing this sideways, so I try to pull my little plus sign off to the upper right. We're trying to trick the ribbon here. I've got a really long tail here, which is not necessary, but for purposes of time, I'm gonna go ahead and do our ribbon, or our bow here. I did that wrong, didn't I? There we go, let's do it this way. The reverse tweezers are like a third hand for me. It's one of my favorite tips, especially to have success tying bows. It helps so much. Okay, there we go, pull those away. And then let's just make zhuzh, you guys, right? Z-H-U-Z-H, Brian's like, I'm so tired of hearing you spell that name or that word. But we gotta make our bows pretty around here, right? All right, there we go. Cut off the ends, I love this window pane check. go make a mess slide our little cute little tag up there I think we're all twisty twisty but that's all right let's flip that around get this mess out of the way and there we have our a2 card set gift pouch oh I slid the you could do it with the denim ribbon, which is really cute on this. This is the window pane check, which you will still be able to order after July or after um, June 30th. Okay. So again, just to recap, we are using the Ringed with Nature bundle. Comes with this fabulous stamp set and a hybrid embossing folder set, which I showed you how to use it tonight. The hybrid embossing folder is a 3D embossing folder that works with the dies to cut and emboss at the same time, or you could just emboss as well. You could also emboss just single pieces too. That is a 16 die set that comes with the embossing folder. Get the whole bundle for $53 starting Friday, July 1st. And then you can choose the Rings of Love designer series paper as your free with purchase. 
during celebration. All right, why don't we jump into Q&A? You guys had some fantastic questions. I was taking a peek at some of them as they were coming through. Let's go here really quick. I want to quick see if I missed anybody that was new. Let's see here. Did you notice anybody new that I may have missed? <clears throat> Let's see. I don't think so. Maybe first. Oh, first timer. Let's see. Oh, Ethel, your first time catching us live. Welcome. And Ann Drake, welcome. First time watcher. Awesome. All right, let me tee up your questions here. I'm just typing in a queue so that I can make sure I catch them, but I'll say hi to you guys as well that have cues in your um, in your comments. So Nancy, hello. Joanne, hello. Are we good with all the product shares for, for you? Yes, Cindy, you are all taken care of on the list, paid and ready to go. Thank you. Oh, Becky, thank you. She's doing better. We had a little bit of a setback. Um, I don't remember if we, was that last week that I talked about it? She has E. coli or had E. coli in her bladder. So it went from like gallbladder to liver, which was the big thing that sent her to the hospital for a couple of days. This is our chocolate lab Kona. That was what, eight weeks ago now? It was Memorial Day weekend. And then last week she was having to go to the bathroom a lot and we noticed some blood in the urine. Anyways, they tested that and um, we thought it was a UTI and I guess it's a UTI, but because of E. coli. So I'm like, I still don't totally understand it all. They're still running blood work, but she's doing better. Her spirits are great. She got a great grooming job on Monday. Um, both the doggies look good and smell good and they have clean beds and anyways, so she's doing much better, but yeah, I feel bad for her, but she's a good sport. She's taken lots of pills that Brian's given her, but, uh, they have their own struggles with that. So <laughs> thank you for asking. Um, let's see. Oh, good, Nancy Lee. I'm glad this will be helpful for you for all the cards you've made. Hi, Nalita. Brian, do you have a show and tell? Norleen. <laughs> I keep thinking I was going to, he had gotten into, um, leather making for a little bit during the pandemic. And I told them all I was going to show them one of your wallets. We may have to do that. I like the suggestion, Norleen. Oh, you're going to show us? He's got one in his pocket right now. He's removing the personally identifiable information. I'll, I'm going to keep going to questions and then. Can you cut and emboss at the same time with any die cut in any embossing folder? No, you cannot. Only the hybrid ones. And right now we have, I think it's only two of them. All right. Show and tell from Brian Norlene. How's that? There's my keyboard. So my handy husband and talented husband made this wallet himself, including, do you see the embossed edges on there? He sewed this, you hand sewed this. You hand drilled the holes to sew, right? Yeah. And then hand sewn, it's pretty nice, isn't it? Too bad it took him how long to make that? This one wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad, that was not your first one, mm -hmm. but yeah. I don't think people could afford you. <laughs> um, great question. But yes, you cannot, or sorry, you cannot um, cut and emboss with any die cutting folder. It is specifically the hybrid one. So make sure you're paying attention to that, that are um, specifically set up for that. Okay. Um, how do I store my scraps? Well, that's not a good suggestion. Um, so I've got a couple of different ways, Mary. Um, I use these pockets from Stampin' Storage, they're the eight and a half by 11 paper sleeves, and those store right next to my paper behind me. Um, I've just got it labeled with the color, so I do all my cardstock scraps that way. I also have paper sleeves for 12 by 12 in a similar way, and then for my six by six, I use Avery L um, clear pockets, and I trim them down to six and a half. And then I can just throw the scraps right inside. And these are for the six by six. Let me show you. These are the pockets. Um, I actually trim mine down because they don't fit in the Ikea shelves. I trim them down so they just barely fit. But these are the paper pockets from Stampin' Storage, not the paper sleeves. The paper sleeves will fit. But same thing, I just throw my scraps right in there with the pocket. Thank you for that. All right, let's come on back. So the paper is in the celebration catalog, Vicki. 
Um, that's the smaller catalog and celebration is from July 1st to August 30th. So you can earn free products from that catalog with either purchases of $50 or purchases of $100. There's a couple other extra freebies in there as well, depending on your purchase total. So the scoring, Mary, is... I think you're talking about the card. I'm guessing that based on the timing. So we took an eight and a half by 11 and we scored it in portrait, right? So we had on the eight and a half inch side, scored that at four and a quarter. So right down the middle on the long or on the short side. So with it in portrait, and then we cut at three and a quarter. Okay. And then we turned it and cut it at five and a half. So we had two card bases. Gina, I love doing Stampin' Up! full-time. It's been sort of my uh, more recent dream, I would say, when I first joined as a demonstrator 12 years ago. It was not on my radar at all. And I just, you know, each day fell in love with it. And I'm just so very grateful to have the opportunity to um, be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator full-time and make a difference that way. So thank you. Yeah, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. There's never enough hours in the day, I'm finding. <laughs> I thought I was going to have all this extra time and it's so funny it's um it's it's crazy how you know things just fill up your time is the bone folder really made out of bone or is it plastic i hope you're okay with the answer lisa a eh? it is actually made out of bone it is cow bone so yes it is made out of bone it's actually bone the stampin up ones um you can get teflon ones not from stampin up but um other people love the teflon ones as well so yes, believe it or not. <laughs> Hello from Albuquerque. That's where my grandmother grew up. Love it. Love the design, but do you find the card floppy? I actually don't, Michelle. I was concerned with that as well. I, I specifically chose not to add a lot of embellishment to the front, but I found that it wasn't as floppy as I thought it was going to be. Now, some of that is still you, because you have that, ha that one inch of the cardstock kind of keeping it a little bit stiffer. Now I do find I love the Poppy Parade cardstock because it feels a little bit uh, sturdier. It's not thicker, it feels like sturdier and I think it's just because of the ink. Oftentimes with the red, like the Mary Merlot, Poppy Parade, I feel like the cardstock's a little bit um, stiffer and that actually helped giving that front structure but it's not as floppy as I thought it would be. Let's see, I know, practice with glue. It's one of those things. Everybody's got their favorite thing. Um, could you please show the DSP again? It's not easy to see all the designs. I sure can, Enika. Let me pull a full package. Maybe. Oops. I have like partials behind me, but let me show you this really quick. So, oops, talking like you can see it. All right, let me get the keyboard out of the way. So this is the one we used tonight and you saw the back pattern of that. This is the fall one, which I think is beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna move these out of the way a little bit. Love the birdies. And this beautiful pattern on the back, perfect for winter. I see snowflakes in that image. That's what, that's that salt technique. The trees and these will have tree oh not tree rings on the back I'm mixing that one up but I love these medallions you get two each of tw two each of six double-sided designs love the mushrooms those are the ones that have the tree rings on the back and those can actually be die cut I believe let's check a few of those maybe I haven't checked this yet I don't know if they can be die cut. I don't know that they actually line up completely, but it would still be cute die cut there. <clears throat> good enough. Yeah, Brian says good enough. <laughs> and then this is the one that's beautiful, like poinsettias, great for Christmas. And that's the back side of that one. Okay, so the colors in this one, this is the free paper again for celebration. Uh, crushed curry, evening evergreen, mint macaron, night of navy, parakeet party, that's a surprise in there, petal pink, poppy parade, soft suede. Great question. All right. Can you show how to cut the card inserts to get the best use of paper? Um, Linda, yeah, let me show that really quick. It's pretty easy. I'm assuming... 
you're talking about the basic white, but this is basically what I do. I take it in portrait and I cut two strips to four inches. So four and four. You're gonna have a half inch strip, great for sentiments, okay? And then I just come in and cut it to five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. You can get four of them out of a sheet of 12 by 12. Again, you get another half inch strip. Great for sentiments. And I do the five and a quarter by four so that you've got an eighth of an inch of the card base peeking around from the back. So again, that's how I did it. I'm gonna lay it out so you can picture it because sometimes that's a little difficult to picture. So one, two, move it over this way, three, four, this guy's going to be along the side, and then these two, move this up here, <laughs> it's funny how it doesn't fit like that, that's how I cut it for card inserts, so four by five and a quarter, you get four of them, you've got these pieces that you can use for sentiments, okay, hopefully that helped you Linda. All right, let's see. Do you cut the insides down to size by yourself? I do it myself, Nancy, but full, dis full disclosure, I have a stack paper cutter. I can do a whole pack of um, basic white at once. So um, I have taken it to Staples before as well or FedEx Kinko's. My best tip if you're gonna do that, take a template because the one time I did it, they cut it the wrong direction and I and they threw the rest of it in the trash. <laughs> so I only got um, 80 card bases out of a pack of basic white when I should have gotten 160. So I was like, what did you do? And the, um, the store manager pulled a $20 bill out of the cash register and he was like, well, surely we have paper here. I said, no, you don't, because I ordered this direct from Stampin' Up. It's got clay in the paper, like, it's a thing. So yeah, that's when we pulled out a $20 bill. I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, take a template, okay? All right, Gina, thank you, thank you, thank you. I did mean July 1st in case I said June 1st. <laughs> Again, my brain, but yes, July 1st. Is the bossing folder included in the $53 bundle? Yes, Darlene. So the $53 ringed with nature bundle, stamp set, dies, embossing folder all comes together. And the dies and embossing folder are come together. You can purchase those. They come together no matter what. The hybrid is a is a uh, embossing folder instead of dies. And then you can get it with the stamp set for $53. What would the sandwich be for an old big shot to cut the tree ring? So an old big shot would still be sort of that base plate. So if you have the one with the hinge, you'd open both tabs just down to the bottom tab. And I believe Sizzix had a blue sort of thicker um, embossing plate. You would use that, okay? The GSM weight of the cardstock in DSP. Ooh, Melissa. Um, cardstock is 80 pound cover weight. Correct me if I'm wrong, everybody, because I remember one is 80 pound and one is 110 pound. And the designer series paper, I'm not sure, but trust me, it's not too flimsy, I promise. Okay, you should give it a try. I know you've got pattern paper, you can try it on. <laughs> Um, are there any other hybrid folders like this that Stampin' Up! offers? Yes. The other one is, hold on, let me take a sneak peek at the catalog. I can't show it to you, but it is a returning favorite. Uh, the Merriest Frames Hybrid, um, that is going to be, is in the mini catalog as well, launching on July 1st. That is a returning favorite from the last holiday mini, so last, it ended up being August to December, but same time frame. And I don't know where my other catalog is. Hold on one second. I'm trying to remember if there's a hybrid in here. Thick is 110. Page 110? No, thick. Oh, thick. The thick one is 100. The thick basic white 
is 110 pound. Okay, so thick basic white is 110 pound, which means regular basic white and the cardstock is 80 pound, even though they feel like they're different thicknesses, they're technically the same weight. But I'm not sure on the designer series paper. I apologize for that. I will have to double check, but I don't think we have any hybrids in the annual catalog. I'm looking, trying to look really quickly here. If anybody happens to know in the comments, I just don't think we've got hybrids. At least that I can remember off the top of my head. So, good question though. I'll check afterwards. All right. Oh, awesome, Vicki. You made the three by three card set and box from a few weeks ago and love the stamping template technique. Love it. Thank you, thank you. Um, can they be embossed too? I think you're asking about the, the white part. Yes, those can be embossed as well. It will take a little bit to line them up in the embossing folder, but yes, absolutely, you can emboss those. I would emboss them after you stamp. That's my tip for you. Don't emboss before, because then you won't get a good stamped image. Emboss after you stamp, okay? Is there a way to revive red rubber stamps? You have a couple that are about a year old and they seem to have become hard. Good question, Barbara Jean. I have not had to revive red rubber stamps, um, so I'm not quite sure of the answer, other than you could try using the stamping mist. That is our cleaning spray. Uh, this is a tiny bottle, but it comes in an eight ounce bottle. It, um, it is designed to clean and condition our red rubber stamps. So I would try that. I know that some people, I know that people have tried to revive red rubber. I just don't happen to know off the top of my head. So I recommend maybe checking out Split Coast Stampers or doing a quick Google search and see what you might come up with to see if anybody's had success or has some tips or tricks for that. But if anybody in the chat has done that, feel free to chime in there. Yes, the inserts can be embossed also. When you stamped the red hearts, did you stamp them using a clear, clear block or did you use the Stamparatus? I used the clear block, just on a tiny, I did the tiny little, which letter is this? The A clear block. I just did that and stamped them a hundred times. I did 10 rows of 10 and gave it to my scanning cut machine to do the rest. <laughs> Yes, you can use all the heart cutouts as like a stencil. Yes, you can, great idea. The cards do weigh one ounce or less, Michelle. I checked that before I put stamps on and yes, July 10th, um, first class mail is getting a two cent price increase, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so yes, but they are one ounce or less. We didn't put a lot of layers on it, so it stays below an ounce. Now, if I were to put, sometimes I'll put, um, pieces of designer series paper in there and then yes that'll bump it up to more than an ounce your scan and cut mat needs to be replaced i've bought a couple but they won't work Ooh, sharon you have to be very particular about which mats you purchase because there are registration marks on that mat so that the machine knows if it's the right mat or not so if you think of it, shoot me an email. I can try to help you figure that out. But I know for my SDX 125, there's a very specific mat that I have to purchase. Otherwise, it won't read the mats otherwise. So basically what the Scan and Cut's trying to do is it's using those registration marks to basically feed information back into the computer itself, not your computer, but the computer on the Scan and Cut. So it knows what it's scanned, what it's seeing, and then where to cut everything. So yeah, not all cutting mats will work in all machines. You gotta pay attention to that. How do you keeping of the backing how do you keep the backings of dimensionals from showing up all over your house? Well, Linda, um they do show up, but I try to it's sort of second nature. Like as soon as the live stream is over, that's probably the first thing I'm gonna throw away are those backings because I'm looking at them right now and I just wanna put them in the trash. <laughs> I try to put them in the trash as soon as I can, but yes, they've shown up on doggies' noses and in the bathroom and all kinds of weird places, but I try to throw them away sooner than later so that the, they don't get tracked around. But yeah, they're static and, you know, I missed one or it you know, stuck to the side of my tabletop, but yeah. How did you get the hearts so straight? Oh, stamping on the page, I think. I don't know. It's my 
my crafty OCD I blame it on, but it's just when I'm doing something very repetitive, they tend to always kind of go in line with each other, but not totally straight, but I can see why you'd think that. <laughs> I love the Stampin' Up! envelopes, Emma. They are beautiful. I love the way that they've got a curved edge. Um, they're one of my, I, I don't use any other envelopes, so I love them, but I am biased, right? I do love them though. They have um, basic white and very vanilla. I think that's it. And I believe basic white and very vanilla for the note cards as well. The note cards and envelopes are three and a half by five cards and they come with the envelopes. And I can't remember if we have cr crumb cake now. We might have crumb cake note cards and envelopes too. But all the envelopes, the envelopes have kind of the same rounded cut flap. They're really nice. No naked envelopes. That's right, Bobby. Do you think Stampin' Up! will ever create pigment ink in popular colors? Current ink pads dry too fast. I hope that they will, Vicki. Um, if not pigment ink, I would love alcohol inks. I think those are two different things. <laughs> um, pigment ink, I'm thinking, I think you're thinking of the craft ink, like the basic white. Um, but I don't know if they will. It all depends on if they will be popular or not. What do I do with all the projects I make? I try to give them all away. During the pandemic, that was a little bit difficult, but I always try to give them away, whether it be at um, daycare or my nail technician or um, send them to crafty friends. I give them, like usually if I go visit somebody, I bring something with me. Um, but yeah, I try to give them away, so. Yes, Stampin' Up! envelopes, great quality. Could you use the cardstock for the pouch and use DSP to accent? You could, Tina, if you use 12 by 12 cardstock. I tend to only stick to eight and a half by 11 because the um, 12 by 12 cardstock only comes in color family packages. You can't get full um, packs except for white and vanilla. Um, but yeah, you absolutely could use cardstock for it. You just gotta use 12 by 12. Do I cut the score line out? I don't typically, I just cut right down the middle of it. Got that, Vicky, I think that's a duplicate. Okay, did you use basic white cardstock to stamp the hearts? I did. Um, let's see, on the Brother Skin and Cut regular stickiness tears up basic white as it won't release the paper. Does the light sticky sheet, I have actually never purchased the lighter, uh, the low tack, I think is what it's called. I, this is just the regular tack. Um, the first, usually around the first and second time with a new mat, yes, I get a little bit of the basic white sticking to it. I try not to press it down so hard the first few times I use a new mat. Now, I, since I've used my mat so much, I do have to press it down a little bit more to get it to stay put but you could absolutely try the light one and see if that works better. The little handheld coin pouches that you squeeze open, yes. Would you make a, oh, a beautiful project would make a fantastic gift. If you were inclined to round the corners on the pouch, could you round the inside top pouch edge as well? Yeah, you absolutely could, Kimberly. Um, because the pocket folds flat, absolutely, you could round it. I don't know that you would need to round it because it's going to be covered by the flap. At a minimum, I would just do the flap. But yeah, you could absolutely do that. I have made the card holder for 3x3, Stephanie. That was posted on my blog last week. All the details and a video tutorial as well um, at thepaperpixie.com. Okay. The reverse tweezers, you can find those on my favorites page, Kim. Um, if you're talking about the reverse tweezers that are coming in the annual or in the mini catalog, you'll find them. I'm not sure which page it's on, but there is an embossing additions kit, I think, is, or an embossing additions toolkit. It's got the Powder Pal, Powder Pal, Embossing Buddy, a brush, and the reverse tweezers. So that's coming up in the mini catalog launching on Friday, July 1st. Good job, Brian from Bobby. Is there going to be a printable template to use for reference that shows the furring and, oh, the folding and scoring line like the one you use? Yes, Sharon, you'll find that on my blog. I am again behind on blog posts. So this project will post next week where you'll be able to print that blog post which includes the template, okay? I missed the card, can you show it again? Do one with the right paper. This is what the card looks like. 
and it's got a designer series paper front. Really, really cool. So be sure to check out the replay so you can see that in action. Happy to answer questions, thank you. Is there a heart hybrid? There used to be, Janet. I'm thinking, I believe it's in the outgoing mini catalog. Oh gosh, I can't remember. But I think maybe there is a hybrid right now on the last chance list. So check that out. Seaside, thank you. Friends are like seashells, that is hybrid. Thank you for that. And twigs and sprigs. See, I knew you guys would come to my rescue. Thank you. Thank you for the Q&A shout out. Yes, Brian does work with me full time now. And what he did before, oh boy, you were a forensic accountant, you've been in compliance, fraud investigations, which is forensic accounting, and he was a CFO. So that was that, all numbers. <laughs> Aren't there some colored envelopes in Celebration? There are, Kathy, that go with the Splendid Day Suite. That's one of the freebies, a set of cards and envelopes as well. Happy to do the Q&A, you guys. All right, looks like we've reached the end. So I wanna thank you again. If you got some tips or tricks or enjoyed tonight's video, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on either YouTube or Facebook so you don't miss my next video. I will be live next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 247. I will soon update the description of this video with a link to the products once they go live on Friday, July 1st. Again, tonight was a sneak peek of one of my favorite combos of things from the mini catalog and celebration. And as always, I appreciate you watching live or on replay. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Couple quick reminders, tonight's the last night to, per to sign up for my product shares. And tomorrow's the last day for the kits collection, buy one, get one 50% off, as well as the last chance sale as well. Friday morning at 3 a.m. Mountain Time is when celebration starts and the mini catalog goes live for ordering. Reach out if you have any questions and I will see you next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Take good care. Bye.